Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us once again for another amazing Animal Career Day video. This one is going to be very exciting because I have to say I actually don't know much about this topic. So this is going to be a great learning experience for both you and me, which makes this field so fun. Now before we get too into it guys, I just want to go ahead and say thank you so much to all of our supporters. You guys have been amazing. Donations are really what's keeping us alive right now. We can't thank you enough. So if you're able to donate just a few dollars, please, please do so. It really does help. Understand that not everyone can donate right now and that's absolutely okay. So share, share, share. Sharing our videos, commenting and liking is the best way to go and get this message out and hopefully we can go and reach more people to be able to help us. So thank you so much. Again, you can donate right here on our Facebook page or by going to lionhabitatranch.org. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you don't know who I am, I am Keeper Kylie and I'm here with the Lion Habitat Ranch. So I am very grateful to have you here. And I am joined by, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Danielle from Georgia and I am learning how to be a beekeeper. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> This is something, guys, that, like I said, is totally new. A beekeeper. We like animals, big and small. So we want to make sure that everyone gets the attention that they deserve. So what does that entail, really? So beekeeping, uh, a lot of people have the conception um, that you just get a box of bees, you can leave it in your backyard, and they're good to go. But that's not the case. They need help from us um, as their keeper. So as their keeper, we're going to look for signs of pests. There's a lot of things that go into managing your hives, um, keeping them safe and helping them grow. Wow. Would you say that it's kind of a full-time job? It's definitely something that keeps you active? Um, no, it actually doesn't. So bees are still, even under human care, they're still wild animals. And we want to give them time um, and space because going into their hive, which is their nest, it's their home, um, without purpose is really rude, <laughs> you know? So it's definitely a balancing act. There's a lot of little things that you're looking for, but you want to do it in a timely fashion. If you're going into the hive, you want to make sure that you're paying really close attention. Those observation skills are probably going to come into play quite a bit, but you want to, again, respect their home and get out fast. It's like if somebody was coming and cleaning your home. You want them to be thorough, but you don't want them there all day. So if somebody wanted to get into this field, is there any kind of education certifications or even some really good skills that they might want to go and brush up on before they get into it. Somebody might really like bees and really like honey, but what is something that they really should understand before getting into this? That is a great question, Kylie. So just like any other hobby, you're going to want to do as much research as you can before you go into it. Um, there aren't any specific certifications you need to get started. You don't have to have any specific education either. Um, there are, as far as skills go, you just want to have good observation skills. My biggest recommendation would be getting involved in a bee club uh, because there's tons of people in a bee club that um, can give you just so much practical information. You can read all the books, which I do recommend. I recommend, um, you know, reading, brushing up on just some basic skills, um, bee anatomy, their life cycle, there's, you shouldn't be familiar with the basics. Uh, my first lessons in beekeeping was a highly recommended book by the club, so I went ahead and purchased that and have uh, read that. I got Beekeeping for Dummies. <laughs> this was also very helpful, very steep learning curve, uh, I'll say that, but luckily I've had really great people that I can uh, go to with questions. Um, and this is another beautiful book. Uh, is in color. It's it's super thorough, and I really love this book as well. Um, so, anyways, bees they're just they're one of the most studied animals on the face of the earth. They've been cared for and studied, um, written about since early human civilization. You know, ancient civilizations. So, you could ask ten beekeepers the same question. And you'll get 13 different answers. You know, that's a running joke. And it's true. Um, and the cool thing about that is, is not one answer is wrong. All 13 answers could be right. So there's, there's just tons of stuff to learn. 
um, and having those people to go to is invaluable. That's amazing. And that really shows about, I really think the animal field, care field in general, this is a field that is constantly bringing people together to learn. There are certifications that you can acquire, which of course I recommend anyone strive for that because the better beekeeper you become, the better we can serve and protect our precious pollinators. What are some of your tasks go out because usually we talk about what's a day in the life kind of include but yours is different because you were talking about how you don't go out there every day okay so when i approach the hive you know you one of the things you want to pay attention to is the activity going in and out of the entrance of the hive are there bees coming in and out you want to see that they're bringing in pollen you know pollen's super important they need pollen and nectar um and um, and they make honey with the nectar but yes, pollen is a very important source of food for them. So we want to see that they're finding pollen, that they're hauling it in. Um, remove the frames as carefully and gently as you can. You pull them out. I put the at least one or two on a rack to give myself some more uh, room to work. And I get in. I do the basics. I look for pests. I make sure that the queen is laying eggs. Eggs, eggs is the biggest thing. She can lay um, 2,000 eggs a day. And then once you do what you do, you want to close it up um, and walk away. And the whole thing should take, you know, 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes tops. You're obviously an animal lover at heart. So I have to ask, do you have a favorite animal, be it a favorite species or a particular favorite individual? So I know this may be disappointing, um, but I actually don't have a favorite animal. Um, I love all animals so much. Um, I feel like if you take enough time to actually learn about any given animal, no matter how big, how small, there's going to be something insanely impressive that you learn about them. So it, for me, it's just, it's too hard to pick an absolute favorite. I do, however, have a very soft spot, um, for all the villainized creatures, the misunderstood animals, things like, uh, sharks and bats and moths and vultures and crows, opossums, bees, you know, all those little critters that um, have a bad rap, you know, so I love those extra, maybe because because they need the extra love. Um, I do, however, have a least favorite animal, though, um, oh. and <laughs> yeah, that would be mosquitoes, and it is, it is not for a lack of appreciation, because they, too, um, have amazing things about them but they love me and so I don't love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> Very awesome. So we were talking a little bit earlier about how intricate the hives really be and it seems like there's a lot of activity going around so why don't you go ahead and elaborate kind of on what those bees are doing kind of what are their jobs and how their life stage. So probably take us through our life stages first and then how that plays into what roles they're doing because apparently they are doing a lot more than people think they are. So here are some life stages of the bee. So this would be in the honeycomb. So their honeycomb would be like this. We wouldn't actually be looking at it straight down. Um, but yeah, it's a little, little, little grain of rice. It, it's actually extremely hard to see. It's been the most frustrating part of my job is finding these tiny eggs. Next in line, we have their larval phase and they basically look like a little C. Um, and they get plumper and plumper until um, the bees eventually cap off the cell and it grows into this creepy thing. <laughs> He's cute in his own way. Yes, but they look a little bit like aliens. They're, um, you know, this is all capped off when, when this pupil phase happens. Um, so again, this is a pupa. And, and they um, are kind of clear like that, right? That's because yes. they haven't developed any kind of essentially exactly. skin. They basically have a really thin exoskeleton and then the rest of are all the gooey insides. Yes, yep. So they're all, they are actually very pale. Um, like this, they don't have that pigmentation yet. Not 
clear, clear like this. It's like a little bit milkier of a color, but still they are all folded up like this. Their antennae are folded down. Their legs are all folded down. They're very neatly packed inside that cell. Um, and then they chew through their little wax cap and emerge a bee. However, not as bright as this bee. Uh, they, they get darker um, in time, but they're pretty pale when they emerge. Not translucent pale. But so okay. when they emerge, what is kind of the first thing that they are going to end up doing? Are they immediately going out and doing stuff for the hive? Are they taking care of themselves? What What is those roles progress into? So for a worker bee, they have many, many different roles. They're super impressive. You know, we hear so much about queen this, queen that, you know, but the workers the workers are so essential, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> you know, so when the worker hatches out, she's going to clean her own cell. That's one of the first things. She's gonna eat pollen, some nectar, and gorge herself, and she's gonna clean her own cell out. Then she's gonna start cleaning out other cells so that the queen um, has clean cells to lay in. A lot of people don't know how, that a bee nest is one of the most sanitary places in nature. It is extremely clean. Uh, we, uh, we went over that earlier. They are OCD. Take note, human babies. When you come out, I expect you to clean your room and then go and clean the others. Exactly. Watch the humans. Yes. We, have, we could learn so much from bees. So they, go, they undergo a series of things um, to speed it up a little bit. You know, they will... Um, they go from cleaning the cells, uh, another point, they take care of the queen, they feed her, they groom her, they take care of their, the babies, kind of like a, a babysitter, they're not old enough to leave the house, you know, and do a real job, but they'll take care of the babies, you know, which is a very important job, by the way, so they feed them and will visit them, from what I've read, over a thousand times a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely uh, nuts. <laughs> yes. And, um, they'll receive uh, nectar from the foragers and to turn start turning that into honey. They receive pollen and they go and put that away. Then their wax glands develop and they can start building comb and capping off honey and capping off uh, the baby brood. Um, then they'll Are start the combs and the caps all kind of made out of the same material? Yes. Yep. So the wax is wax is wax. Wax is wax okay. is wax. That's yep. cool. Yes. And then uh, they can become guard bees. They'll stand at the front of the hive and they will orient their sisters back to the hive uh, with some pheromones. And they also will do little orientation flights. They'll get their surroundings. They look for landmarks. Yeah, they, they've just got so many jobs. Their last no, job. Though, sorry, is, just really on the guard bees real quick. Obviously, that implies that they are guarding the hive. Do they know if there's an enemy coming or if there's something that shouldn't be there? Yes, they do. They're very aware of their surroundings and they have an incredible sense of smell. So if, there is, if I even go visit my bee, you know, they know that I'm there. They, they know that I'm present. They can smell me. And some people have even said that they can um, identify their beekeepers. <laughs> what about another bee? Do, they all, do all bees look and smell the same? That's a super great question. Uh, they don't. So even other honeybees, if another honeybee tries to enter a hive that they don't belong to, they will chase it out. They can smell that it has a different... Um, pheromone signature so and after guarding then what's the next step so with the guarding though that's when they'll they'll also start to take those orientation flights and get familiar with their surroundings and then they'll start doing the foraging that's their last role um which is really the only role we tend to know them for but that is the last part of their that's what they do in that the last part of their a worker's life cycle now, what's something that nobody would expect about bees? What's something that you think that the world needs to know about bees? 
One of the things I really wanted to address in this interview was that bees are not out to get us. So many people, there's just this widespread fear of bees because of their sting, you know, which is understandable. But it's really not something that should be preoccupying our minds so much. Um, bees, their they're one and only goal in life is to collect nectar and pollen so that they can make enough food to survive the winter. They simply don't have the time or resources to just chase people around. Now, what's something that people would be surprised about, about being a beekeeper? What's something about your job that's a little bit unusual or people might not know about? So one of the things people might not know about is, um, you know, usually when you picture a beekeeper, you kind of picture them looking like someone in a hazmat suit, you know. Um, you don't have to actually wear a big, giant, um, full-body suit. You know, they're actually pretty docile. Even when you're in the nest, you know, you might get stung here and there, but it's really, it's it's not like you would imagine. Gloves, believe it or not, you know, are one of those optional items. Those were one of the things that I was trying to get myself um, away from quickly. Um, another misconception is that there's only one way of beekeeping. A lot of people always think of the Langstroth hives, which are those boxes, but there's lots of different ways to keep bees and lots of different reasons that people keep bees other than honey. So um, that's a common misconception as well. Awesome. Well, going a little bit more into that, you talked about the uniform per se, you know, the, the full outfit. What are some other tools that you need in your job uh, when you go out there or when you are maybe at home taking care of it? I think you mentioned having to make food and stuff earlier too. So can you go and show us some of the tools that you need? A bee journal. I made my own. Uh, and you're going to just keep some notes in here, things like that. Uh, so when you go to the hive, um, here's the feeder. So this is something that the bees will eat from. So before the nectar flow hits, before all the flowers come into bloom, um, we have to provide them with sugar syrup. And I make that right in my kitchen. Um, the little bees will just crawl right in here. Then this has little holes in the lid and the bees will just go under and will basically lick the syrup from the holes, like a little gerbil so feeder. Cute. <laughs> uh, this is the hive tool. This is a super important tool. Um, they come in a variety of styles. This is a traditional style. When you're in there, you can use this to help separate the um, frames. So I'd put it maybe like here, and then you just kind of tilt it to this side or this side to get the frames unstuck. Um, this will also help us crack off the top of the hive, the top lid, the really everything. Uh, the smoker is super, super, super important. It helps us work with those bees without um, getting stung or at least reducing the number of stings significantly. Uh, the smoke helps keep them calm. So it helps mask that alarm pheromone because uh, again, they're going to perceive every entry into their hive as a threat. So yeah, we, we use this, it helps mask that odor. Um, we also, where's another tool? Oh, my bee suit, super hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially in the summer. So um, I did get myself this veil to wear in the summer, and I'm sure that I'll be willing to take a couple stings as opposed to sweating my tushy off in this uh, full bee suit. Guys, again, really take this to heart. This is something that is just one of those things where it doesn't matter how small they are. People who care for animals care for animals that that's both a noun and a verb we are caring and doing the work behind it but we also have that emotional attachment and it doesn't matter how small they are or how many legs they have or anything like that 
keepers who go and work with their animals really do care about them. So I hope this is something that you kind of are learning about more and more is that when you see the passion behind every one of these interviewers, you can really take that to heart. So if there's a species out there that you want to work with, it doesn't matter if somebody might not think that it's cool. Go out there and learn about them and you'll probably meet other people who also think that those animals are cool. And that's a really great way to get into this field. I absolutely love hearing the amount of passion and dedication that you have there. It's really, really cute. It is a misconception that somebody who knows nothing about it might think about beekeeping. A common misconception about beekeeping, one would be that it's a cheap uh, startup. In the grand scheme of things, it depends on what you consider cheap and what you consider expensive. Starting a restaurant certainly is very expensive. So beekeeping compared to being a restaurant entrepreneur is very cheap. But one to $2,000 <laughs> is not my idea of cheap. So be ready to spend, you know, a, a, over a grand, you know, to start up. It's not gonna be one, $200, you know. Uh, so be prepared for that. Um, it's not as simple as just putting bees in your backyard and letting them live in a box. You know, there's a lot of management that we had discussed that goes into it. You need to anticipate their growth. You can't just stack all the supers up and say, you're good to go. You have all the space to, to build and store in. You know, if you put on the honey supers too early, they're at risk of uh, being robbed and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's too much area for them to defend. They have to grow into that space. Um, and, you know, pest management, all that. Um, another misconception with beekeeping is that there's just one way to keep bees. You know, there are so many different ways to keep bees. There are so many different types of hives, so many different reasons people keep bees all of which should be under the great umbrella of just you love bees because otherwise if you don't really love them you're not really going to be successful you ask it you know i mean this is they are literally the most studied creature in the history of humans you know of life i mean there's just they're so well documented just for since ancient civilizations you know so there's tons of information about their um, about them, tons of different ways people like to keep them. You could ask 10 different beekeepers advice on a situation you're having with your colony. You get 13 different answers and not one of those answers will necessarily be wrong. So it's awesome, but it's also super um, overwhelming, you know, um, just having that kind of information. Awesome. And going back on this, guys, she's really not kidding when we talk about ancient civilizations. There's been bee species for around 30 million years now. So they've been around for a long time. And when humans came into the picture, well, they knew about it. They've actually found cave drawings of ancient humans interacting with bees. And why do bees make honey in the first place? That's a great question because we only think about honey for ourselves <laughs> and they certainly don't make it for us. So, you know, a quick fun fact, um, bees are the only insect that make food for human consumption. Um, so that makes them very special. But um, they make honey so that they can survive the winter. That is what they eat. So what is the favorite, your favorite part of, of this keeping gig? What do you love about it? So I have to say my favorite part about beekeeping has been the relationships I've developed in beekeeping. Just the people I've met are so genuine and authentic and ready to share. And I've just built really amazing connections with this, um, the people in this community. Um, so I'll say, yeah, the relationships that I've, I've um, cultivated in this community have been amazing. Um, but next to that, bee-wise, I would just say everything that I've learned about them, you know, expanding upon my knowledge base has just grown my appreciation and marvel for these animals. And so that's just been really in exciting in and of itself and being surrounded by other people that are super passionate about 
bees, you know, it's just, um, it's contagious. So as it should. So what is the hardest part of the job? What's something about beekeeping that's just, is something that is a struggle almost? Yeah, very fair question. So uh, the hardest part for me has been, you know, the part of sacrificing them for the health of the colony. So uh, earlier I was talking about how I had to requeen a colony, which basically means I had to put a new queen in the colony. The reason I had to put a new queen in the colony is because the other queen was failing. I had a really hard time um, deciding to take her out, um, but I knew if I left her in, it would put the rest of the colony at risk. I've been in animal care, working with all kinds of animals, um, and never in any of the care of the animals that I've worked with have we ever had to be in a position where we have to sacrifice, you know certain ones or you know it was always we had the luxury of you know not ever having to make those choices <laughs> you know so that's been the hardest part um I'd say yeah that is something where it is definitely a new new territory yeah but if people love bees but don't want to go through being a keeper and keeping them, what are some ways that they can still go and provide for the bees that they see around them naturally? Yeah, that's a great question. So this is something I really um, hope people take away from um, this talk, you know, is what you are empowered to do to help them. You know, everybody doesn't have to become beekeeper. It's certainly not for everybody. So one of the things you can do, you know, plant native flowers, you know, uh, leave the weeds, leave the weed flowers, you know, the dandelions and the goldenrod and stuff like that. Um, bees love all those weedy flowers. They don't see them as weeds, you know, we see them as unruly weeds. But if you can't do that, you know, on your whole lawn, you know, um, maybe leave a patch for them. Certainly don't use pesticides. Um, if you have to, have to, have to. Spray at night where, you know, bees are going to be in their hive. Um, and don't spray blooms, you know, don't spray the flowers. That's not to say bees won't die because they don't just land on flowers. They land on the grass and mud and all that to drink water and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, ideally don't spray any pesticides, herbicides, you know, things like that. Don't spray for mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes and don't do it. <laughs> um, Kill, spraying uh, for the mosquitoes, it's a fog, it goes everywhere. So it's gonna kill the bees, it's gonna kill your butterflies, it's gonna kill ladybugs, it's gonna kill your, our beloved little lightning bugs. You know, it's, it's terrible stuff, don't do it. Um, and be an advocate, tell other people not to do it. Put a sign in your yard to protect our pollinators, you know. Um, Another thing you can uh, water, provide water for them. They need lots of water. They are thirsty. I mean, flying all those miles a day, they have to pollinate. They have to visit 2 million flowers to make one gallon of honey. To make one gallon of honey, they need to drink eight gallons of water. You know, so they need lots of water. Uh, one of the ways you can um, provide water for them is as simple as this. Uh, this is just a little mason jar lid a big mason jar lid but um and then I have some pebbles in here so they don't drown because you know they can't just land in the water and fly away so you just fill this up with a little with water and then they'll stand on the little pebbles and they'll drink their water you could put moss you know in there so that they can stand on the moss and sip it through the moss um people use chicken waterers um you know uh a bucket with uh, wine corks. Go ahead and put those wine corks to use. They'll they'll uh, sit on those floating wine corks. Um, so yeah, Google. There's a bunch of different stuff out there. They need water. It doesn't have to be um, immaculate. They like dirty water because it has lots of nutrients in it. Uh, mason bees and um, carpenter bees and uh, gosh, there's squash bees. There's all types of different native bees. Honey bees we talk about a lot, but 
all these other bees are super, super important. Um, different flowers are basically designed to be pollinated by different bees. Honeybees can't pollinate everything. Um, so leave, leave logs that are on the ground that they're going to make their homes in. Um, there's bare sandy patches. Don't feel the need to cover them up with grass all the time because they burrow in the ground. There's also little um, bee houses that you can get that are already pre-put together and you can actually get a spray to um, attract them to it. Um, so yeah, things like that. And just, you know, don't be scared of bees. Be an advocate for them. Awesome, I love it. So many little things that we can do to make a big impact, guys. Think globally, act locally. Yes. All right, and finally, you touched on it a little bit before, but I'm gonna ask you again, because there's just so much on this topic. What do you want people to really know about bees? Again, they're a very studied animal, apparently, but what's something that if they only listen to you today, what's the takeaway about bees? So the, if, if you guys take nothing else away, I, you know, my, I'm most passionate about not leading in fear. You know, um, we tend to let our fears dictate our behaviors, you know, and so I ask that instead of instilling that fear in our children, or, you know, um, just letting it run wild in our adult minds, you know, that we instead teach our children a healthy respect for these animals. Well, I want to go and give a huge shout out to Danielle here. Thank you so much for this. Uh, I was looking so forward to this because uh, as much as I know about animals, guys, I didn't know a lot about bees. I, I looked some up because uh, today happens to be World Bee Day. Uh, we are recording this today. You guys are going to see it afterwards, but you may have seen my bee craft that I was doing, and I went to go and learn about it. And as she was talking about going down a rabbit hole earlier, yeah, guys, there's a lot. Um, but check them out. Appreciate these little powerhouses of the insect world. They are just so amazing. So uh, Danielle, just thank you for taking so much time with this. I, I couldn't just be more thrilled with this. This was a great time. Um, and guys, if you have questions, go ahead and leave them below. Um, we'll be getting back and forth. So if there's a question that we don't know, we'll be able to get in touch with Danielle. And it's like she was talking about earlier, maybe you stump us both. It's okay. There's a whole community out there who we are able to go to, but maybe this is the spark you need to go and look into this. Maybe you know somebody who you think might really enjoy this um, hobby or field. They might not want to be a beekeeper, but maybe they want to be an entomologist and study these guys. That is a great career path, and we are more than happy to help provide some of those resources. So please, please, please uh, share, like, comment. If you know somebody, tag them down below. We want to help get the message out that there is so much more to animal keeping than just lions, I promise. So this is a great opportunity. Remember, donations, folks. I, I know that you guys hear this a lot, but at this time, we are still not open. We know that on our road to recovery, there are uh, some steps that are being taken, and we're really thrilled about that, but we're not part of that yet. We're taking our steps, the steps slowly, so as the government goes and lets us know that it's time to move forward, we will let you know. But right now, for the unforeseeable future, we are not part of that. So please, folks, donations really are a huge help. You can donate right here on our Facebook page or visit lionhabitatranch.org, and you can donate right there. Again, just a few dollars help. Again, we know that people are having some hard times right now. Please don't think um, that we are um, expecting anything from you. But if not, again, just sharing this video helps get that out more, and we can reach more people. Again, huge shout out, Danielle. Thank you so much. I love bees way more now, and I already love them so much to begin with. So thank you so, so much. I had a great time tonight. Thank you so much. If anyone wants to follow our beekeeping adventures, me and my five-year-old son, uh, you can find us at bees and my boo on Instagram. <laughs> Awesome. We'll be sure to go and add that into the link as well. Bees in my boo. Yes. 
<laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much. And again, guys, keep check out next week for another one of our animal career day interviews. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.